everyone, it's Jennifer and we're back again with another art lesson on how to draw animals. And this week I am doing a tiger. As you can see, this is a beautiful Siberian tiger. Um, actually, I'm going to show you a better picture. This one has some of my markings on it already. So that's what he looks like without all of his, the, um, construction lines that I had written on his face. Um, where those came from are from a skull. So this is a photo that I have, I found, of a Siberian tiger skull. The, uh, per, the, um, what am I trying to say? The per perspective here is a little bit different than the way he is photographed, but you get the idea. And I just wanted to show you guys this is sort of a little bit of a of a way a, it's a nice way to see and recognize and take note of the underlying structures um, beneath anything that you are drawing which happens to like let's say have a heartbeat meaning humans or animals or you know insects this kind of thing Anything that is alive has like a bone structure with tissue, you know, and uh, ligaments and um, organs and these kinds of things, which actually help to form the body. So I like to think about these things while I am drawing. And for the purposes of this lesson, I will not concentrate so much on um, I'm not, what I mean is I'm not going to lead the lesson in this manner. If I were to do that, then I'm just going to show you quickly what that would look like. It would be something like this, where when you look at this tiger's face, instead of it being circular, it, because if I'm looking at the skull here, it actually is more triangular shape. You see what I mean? And it's a really cool way to take a look at your beast and decide where to place the features. It just helps, well, it helps me, and I know it helps a lot of other artists who use this same method of thinking about the underlying structures, um, like the skull, and then putting down their initial pencil lines that way. Um, it's a little bit more advanced technique, so we can um, take a look at that maybe at a later lesson, but for now I think it's probably going to be better if we just take a look at our tiger and just try to pull out sort of more recognizable shapes and um, start there. So with that being said, I am going to go and start the lesson and let's see so i again basically this this entire area if you if you take into account all of his hair and everything that is a very large circle so we can just begin right now with that and again i'm taking i'm just going to use this uh two it's called a 2h pencil and it just means that it's the lead is hard, which means it'll put a light line with the graphite down on your paper. So I'm, I'm gonna hold my pencil back as far as I can so I don't um, accidentally start putting in hard lines because those are gonna be harder to erase. All right, so here, and make sure you are aware of where the ears are going to be. So you're gonna wanna bring that circle down just a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to, and you could take your pencil and use it as a measuring device. So basically, actually the length of this, this pencil is the width of, it's the width of the circle. So you could put a little line there. I should have had another it's a little bit shorter. So I'm 
just going to put a pencil line up. Actually, I'm going to bring that pencil line down because I want to make sure I have enough room. And then maybe just right here. So that is just my, my quick way of making some measurements here. Um, and I'm going to erase that upper line so I don't use that accidentally. Okay, so, and it's not like a perfect circle. It's, you know, it's a little bit flatter up here and then sort of You know what, it's actually really similar to, what is it, a hexagon? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's sort of hexagonal shaped. I know we've had a few animals already that are like that. It's just the way that their fur comes off of it because these parts out here are where the, the hinge of his jaw is. And so that's where, you know, it's, it's a really strong bony, prominence there and then the fur just sort of like you know falls off of that section so all right so we have sort of our our canvas on our canvas and now I'm gonna draw a light like a straight line down the middle this just helps me break up this bigger this big space into smaller more digestible chunks, then it doesn't look so scary to me. All right, so if I were to do that same, same sort of like lineage, like the, the lines here, and then went down the middle, and then I think I put it up just a little bit. You can kind of get an idea where all, where the different landmarks are. So I, that's the whole reason why I do this is that it helps me with landmarks. So to start, I like to start with the nose. The nose is here in the middle and he has, it's a little bit down from the middle and he has a, like a triangular shape. So I'm gonna just try to capture that not come down too far. Now I'm just gonna put in a real light line there. I'm trying to look at the distance between the edge of his nose here and where it comes to the outside of my circle. Same here. Just trying to, you know, if I'm trying to draw this like the same for the like the same ratio, then I can take a look at that. Um, and we kind of are starting off like that. So I'm going to put in his nostril lines here. Because that might help me with something else. And then it sort of like comes down. There's a little line here where his fur starts on the top, like the ridge of his nose. a little bit and that's basically it and then I'm gonna start to I'm trying to look at the bigger shapes here so this this little sort of like cheeky section here is another place for me to take a look at a bigger shape and also his this like little chin area down here I'm gonna take a look at that so I'm gonna pull put a little line down from his nose, and then I'm going to try to capture this angle here. Then it starts to come up about halfway. I would say his eyes are like the halfway mark here. So we could actually divide this, this upper part in half. Because it seems like his pupils sort of lay right on that and that's gonna kind of help me decide where to bring in this little cheeky bit cheeky cheeky bit as I like to call it 
I'm looking at the width here, but where the nose and the outside um, of his the cheeks, the nose and the cheeks there. And make sure this this ridge up here, this little part where his cheeks sort of stop and the help just pay attention to that. And I'm always constantly kind of taking a look, making sure everything is in order. And then this is actually kind of a cool shape here. This looks very um, triangular to me. So we think we have that placed pretty well. And then this is going to come down at like an angle. And now, then we can kind of make sure that the width of his nose is correct. All right, so that's pretty cool. 10 minutes in and we've basically have the middle of his face done. I'm just gonna add in before I start on the eyes, his little chin here. Okay, so I think we're in pretty good shape. There's a little bit darker part here. So make sure you don't forget that. And then a lot of this is sort of like hair coming off. Actually his hair, um, it kind of looks like I'm noticing right here, right here is kind of where this bigger section of fur is starting. So I'm gonna just put those in. Oops. actually up a little bit higher, isn't it? It's right there at that the edge there. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that line. And then, all right, so now I'm gonna go up here and try to capture these this eye here. So the eyes can be a little tricky. I know we said, we mentioned that the, we thought the pupil maybe sat on, on this line up here. So I'm just gonna put that in. I'm trying to see if that lines up with anything. It kind of lines up with the lower part of his cheek and it looks like I got that in pretty well, so. This part of the cheek is what I'm talking about. And now I'm going to try to capture this part here is basically starts kind of comes at an angle okay that's like the, the outer part of the eye here and then I'm going to right now get his eyeball put in there. And this is a little bit up, a little bit higher and then he has these cute little black marks. So now I'm going to try to go over to the other side. That's the tricky part, right? Is getting your getting your eyes to match. That's why I like to do this angle thing instead of starting already to do um, to do a round roundness because I can sort of connect the dots. But for some reason. helps me with the shaping. Now I'm going to actually change the placement of his, his pupils are going to be up a little bit higher. If I look into picture here, so I'm going to bring those up. Now I'm going to 
gonna take a look at the ear shapes here and put those in on my face. And that is basically, <coughs> excuse me, it looks like his eye, if I took my pencil and it, his eye, if I took my pencil at an angle right where the center point is on that cross, his ear fits right in the middle of that. So I'm gonna take a look at that. And just place that in, in there. And if this outer edge comes, if you made another little mark there, it would come down about that far. Make sure that you get the angle right. Don't start coming off this way. It's more at an angle. I always take my pencil and sort of measure the angle and then try to bring it to my paper so that I capture the same angle. Uh -huh. This actually looks like it's a little bit wider here. And then I like to put in this little flap here of his ear because that is a, a good way to let the viewer know that that is a three-dimensional part. And then this part of his head is going to kind of arc it a little bit more. Okay, so now we are basically, um, we're, we're practically done with this guy. We just need to put in his other ear. So base, so I would take a look, it's the same exact thing. Lay your, lay your pencil down, lay your pencil down on the paper and it has the same, um, it has the same kind of measurements. Right, and you could take your pencil up at the top and make sure that the ears, you know, like make sure that one isn't gonna get bigger than the other. There we go. This actually kind of comes in here, but he has these cute little furry parts right here. Okay, and then put in that same little ear flap here. Alrighty, we're getting, getting closer. I'm just measuring the tops of his eyes and the bottom of his eyes to make sure that I got them uh, on the same line, that make sure that one isn't up higher than the other. Alright, so now before we add in um, too many of the, if we, before we add in more of the um, fur and stuff, I'm just going to make sure that this is all centered here. Let's see, this distance here, I'm just taking a look, making sure these distances are looking pretty good so probably just need to bring this out a little bit okie dokie I'll probably play around with the eye shape a little bit later once I have a chance to take a look at everything and make sure you know you're getting those eyeballs round Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is just try to real lightly put in some of these lines for the fur. And also on the other side. This part, this side of his head is a little 
little off. So it will all start to make more sense once we get some of his, um, these stripes, actually. Okay, so now I'm going to start taking a look at where the different colors are here, because I think that'll help, you know, sort of shape... shape his face a little bit more. And he has these kind of cool white um, white shapes. Kind of similar to a panda is what they remind me of. Dokey. And then I'm going to take a look at where some more of these white patches are. It looks like on these cheeks here, actually this little triangular section is another part that's a different color. Goes into the those little triangular parts. Um, and then right here underneath, that captures that. And then this up here, we already said, I think this is not so wide. Okay, there we go. Okie dokie. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, actually, you know what you guys, I'd like to, before I start, adding in other stuff. I'm gonna just take off some of these construction lines so I don't get distracted. This is one here. So we might have to put, add some more of those lines in there. And then brush those scrubs away. Actually just pull this down so that I know this this these colors here is what I was trying to take a look at all right so then the way that I would add in these lines is actually really fun it's just um, I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down it's just kind of like this jagged sort of like nervous um, kind of looking lines. And make sure that they start to curve as you come down his face. Oh. 
look, you can kind of see where we're headed here, right? Now the next part is to get in like this, his upper body. And I will try to get that in here in the next 10 minutes so that this doesn't end up being a long lesson. Okay, so it looks like right here, over here on his shoulder, comes out a little bit more because he's sort of like, you know, tilted off to one side. And that's gonna help tell a story too. All right, and then I'm gonna try to capture this, this part or to let the viewer know that he's sort of relaxing. I'm gonna kind of use these stripes here to help me um, put this guy together a little bit better. They, they're kind of like little road, little streets that sort of help me make sense of everything. I'm just gonna put those in because they really do help me kind of figure out where everything is gonna go. Okay, and then I'm just gonna come down here. Make sure you guys can see everything. And then I'm gonna try now to capture this big paw. This is like a huge, huge part of part of him. Looks like that's, and I'm trying to take take a look at the distance between where his fur is and where that is, and try to make make sure it doesn't come up too high. And this is this big stripe that I put in. So I'm gonna see if I can. to this paw is another like little paw. So I'm gonna try to slip that in. Taking a look at this sort of space right here. This is a shape that's gonna help me. I'm gonna try to get that same angle. It's like the like the negative Space and that just helps me determine, right, where where his body parts should go. Okay, now on the picture I can't really see where how this is going, so I'm just gonna kind of just leave it there abstractly, and then the rest of it is just adding in some more of these stripes. in real loose. Um, so as you can see we basically have we have most of the structures in already. I might just bring his hair in a little bit more this way. I'll change his just make sure when you put the fur in it's going the same direction as in the photograph and then you can put in his like his little Follicles where the whiskers are going to come out. Sometimes I forget to add those in, and it drives me crazy when I forget. 
right? And then you can put in the whiskers at the end. So now I'm just gonna, the last thing that I do when I look at a drawing is to make sure I just take a look at everything as a whole. First I look and make sure it makes sense to me that something isn't off, one eye isn't up higher or, you know, not connected right. Those are the kinds of things that I that I take a look. Make sure the pupils are in the same on the same line. This one looks like it's a little high. Okay. Uh, make sure I got all the the important big shapes. That's that is what I want to make sure you guys come away with that. Big shapes. Start with the big shapes, which is why I like I do the nose and then his like big cheeky part. Then I did his chin. And then I think I went to his eyes and then the ears. And it just all helps to put him together. And then we just filled in his bottom part real quick. Okay guys, have fun and thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>